hello guys welcome once more to another video in our youtube channel so in this video we concentrate on looking at similarity transmissions where we are going to be highlighting two key aspects the first is composition of two similitudes and the next is how we can get the cartesian equation of a similitude from the complex representation and vice versa so for those of you who have not watched the video one of this similitude series endeavor to check the description of this video and you're going to find the video one which highlighted the basic important things on that similitude so in this video we'll just continue with what we started in video one okay so we begin with the first key aspect which is the composition of two similitudes so in video one we saw how we can represent similitude on a complex plane so i'm going to consider two separate similitudes the first one i'm going to call it s1 which is z prime equal to alpha 1 z plus beta 1 where alpha 1 and beta 1 are complex numbers and z2 and s2 sorry is z prime equal to alpha 2 z plus beta 2 where alpha 2 and beta 2 are complex numbers as well now we need to do the composition of these two similitudes meaning s1 of s2 what does this mean it means that we should take the similitude s2 and we replace in s1 so doing that it simply means we take the z prime of s2 and we replace it with a z of s1 so doing that we have z prime to be alpha 1 times z but the z becomes alpha 2 z plus beta 2 because it is the z prime of s2 then plus beta 1 we uh, expand we have alpha 1 times alpha 2 times z then alpha 1 times beta 2 then plus beta 1 so we can conclude that the composition of these two similitudes is also a similitude whose um our new al alpha zero here is alpha one alpha two is a complex number and beta zero is beta one plus alpha one times beta two let us look at the properties of this of this new similitude the first is the scale factor we know that the scale factor is just the modulus of the complex number alpha zero but alpha zero is the product of alpha 1 and alpha 2 so the scale factor or the radius is the modulus of alpha 1 alpha 2 and by properties of modulus we just find the modulus of alpha 1 and we multiply with the modulus of alpha 2 what about the angle of rotation the angle of rotation is simply the argument of the complex number alpha 0 which is the argument of the complex number alpha 1 times alpha 2 from the properties of argument it means the and the angle of rotation of our new similitude is the argument of alpha 1 plus the argument of alpha 2 let us look at a little example so we consider two similitudes s1 and s2 s1 is given by that and s2 is given by this we are going to do the composition of s1 and s2 meaning s1 of s2 we are going to determine the radius of this new similitude and we are going to determine the angle of rotation so s1 being given and s2 being given for us to find the composition of s1 of s2 that is s1 of s2 s1 is 2iz plus 3 plus 4i and then s2 is um, z prime equal to 1 plus i times z plus 2 minus i so s1 of s2 simply means that we take what is in red and we replace it with a z here okay so we have 2i times all of this which is 1 plus iz plus 2 minus i then plus now the remaining part which is 3 plus 4i so we expand okay we expand and then we bring like them together to to make it to resemble this form so the composition is z prime equal to 2i minus 2 times z plus 5 plus 8i now the next thing to do is that we need to find the radius the radius or the scale factor of our new similitude and we know that the radius is simply the modulus of the complex number 2i minus 2 and that modulus is the square root of 2 squared plus negative 2 all squared which simplifies to give us 2 root 2 for us to verify if our answer is correct we can use the alternative method which is um, gotten from here to get the modulus of the new similitude we multiply the module the modulus of the first um, that is if you compare this s1 and s2 with this um, s1 and s2 here we see that alpha 1 is 2i and then alpha 2 is 1 plus i so according to our general representation here the scale factor of the composition is the product of the scale factors of the individual similitudes okay so here the scale factor of alpha 1 
of s1 sorry is the modulus of 2i and that of s2 is the modulus of 1 plus i so the scale factor of our new similitude becomes the modulus of 2i times the modulus of 1 plus i which is the modulus of 2i is 2 and the modulus of 1 plus i is the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared the square root of 1, plus 1 squared plus 1 squared is the square root of 2 so we still have the same response now lastly we need to determine the angle of rotation and we said the angle of rotation is the argument of the complex number 2i minus 2 or negative 2 plus 2i and to get the argument of a complex number the first thing to do is that we plot it on an argon diagram we identify the quadrant then we get the argument now negative 2 plus 2i means that the x coordinate is negative and the y coordinate is positive so it lies on the second quadrant so on the second quadrant the argument is pi minus tan inverse of the imaginary part on the real part taking the positive signs only so you have pi minus tan inverse of 2 on 2 don't take the negative sign like i said we take the absolute value when we are taking the tan inverse after applying the, the formula pi minus it so pi minus tan inverse of 1 gives you um, pi minus pi on 4 which is 3 pi on 4 alternatively we could use our standard results the argument of the new of the new um, similitude is the argument of the first one plus the argument of the second one the argument of the first one is simply the argument of 2i and the argument of the second is the argument of 1 plus i the argument of 2i is pi on 2 and the argument of 1 plus i is pi on 4 pi on 2 plus pi on 4 still gives us the real pi on 4 so we are done with that now i'm going to give you guys an exercise and maybe you can solve and you send me your solution through whatsapp to, to cross check or you comment in the comment section and i'm going to reply to you if it is correct or not so we have two similitudes that have been displayed to you sorry f and g not s1 and s2 so we have f and g and there are some things below first is to find f of g next is to find f of g of 2i f of g of 2i means that you need to find the image of 2i under the transformation f of g next is to determine the radius of f of g and lastly is to determine the center of f of g do well to comment in the comment section maybe your solution or you can get to me through whatsapp at the end i'm going to give you my contact so you can get to me and um, for the correction of the equation okay the last thing we are doing today is the cartesian equation of a similitude now um we are just going to consider our general similitude s1 which is z prime equal to alpha 1z plus beta 1 where alpha 1 and beta 1 are complex numbers now we are going to set our z prime to be x prime plus i y prime and our z to be x plus i y we refit in our standard um, representation of the similitude it means x prime plus i y prime is equal to alpha 1 into x plus i y plus beta 1 but alpha 1 and beta 1 are also complex numbers so we can set alpha 1 to be a plus i a 2 a 1 plus i a 2 and beta 1 to be b 1 plus i b 2 we refit in our um, similitude here we have x prime plus i y prime to be a 1 plus i a 2 times x plus i y then plus b 1 plus i b 2 now we need to expand okay so we have we expand this we expand this the rest is expansion and then we group the like terms together and then we equate the corresponding entries at the end of the day we have that x prime is a real part to be equal to the real part which is a1 x minus a2y plus b1 and then y prime which is the imaginary part to be equal to the imaginary part which is a1y plus a2x plus b2 so this is the comp the cartesian equation of our similitude whose complex whose complex representation is given by this where alpha 1 is a1 plus i a2 and beta 1 is b1 plus i b2 take note that a1 a2 b1 and b2 are all real numbers so that's the cartesian equation of our similitude s1 now let us look at an example and the example says we should write down the cartesian equation of our similitude s1 where s1 is z prime equal to 2iz plus 2i so we set z prime to be x prime plus i y prime and z to be x plus i y doing that we have that x prime plus i y prime is equal to 2i into x plus i y then plus 2i we expand the right hand side we get 2i times x is 2i x 2i times i y is 2i squared y then plus 2i take note because this i squared here has a very important property okay our i squared is negative one but when we are going to be doing the backward process we are going to see how to move from this third step to the second step because it is the main key 
in transforming form the Cartesian back to the complex. So x prime plus i y prime becomes 2ix. i squared is negative 1, so minus 2y plus 2i. We can now pair the real parts and the imaginary parts together. So the real part is negative 2y and the imaginary part is 2x plus 2. So we can now write our complex, our Cartesian equation as x prime equal to negative 2y equating the real part and then equating the imaginary part y prime equal to 2x plus 2. Now let us convert this back to the complex plane. So it means let us now see how we can convert the Cartesian back to the complex. So the very thing, our Cartesian is x prime equal to negative 2y and y prime equal to 2x plus 2. Now in the complex, we have this x prime plus i y prime. That is, we have z prime to be equal to alpha z plus beta. That is here, okay? So it means that in y prime, we need to multiply it by an i and then we add the two equations together because the left-hand side is z prime, which is x prime plus i y prime. Since we have y prime and x prime, we need to multiply y prime with i and then we add the two equations together. So multiplying equation 2 by with i, we have i y prime to be equal to 2ix plus 2i. We add the two equations, we have x prime plus i y prime to be equal to negative 2y plus 2x plus 2ix then plus 2i. Now, um, I'm going to pair, remember that we need to have x plus i y, okay? So we try to pair um, the x, which is having i, with this other y. So x prime plus i y prime becomes, we can even factor out 2, and we are going to get i x minus y, then plus this remaining 2i. Like I said, the key of the proof lies in this particular step, the third step, to identify that negative 1 is written as i squared. Okay, so negative 1 being written as i squared, we can now factor out i from the i x plus i squared y factoring out i from here we have factoring out i from i x we get x factoring out i from i squared y we get i y we are doing that because we need to get the complex number x plus i y which is simply the complex number z okay so with this we can now conclude that our z prime which is x prime plus i y prime is equal to 2 i times z which is x plus i y plus 2i so it takes us it takes us back to our complex representation now let us just give some few properties the scale factor is the modulus of 2i which is 2 the angle of rotation is the argument of 2i which is pi on 2 and i'm going to leave you to find the invariant point remember the invariant point is also the center of the transformation okay the last question we are looking at is the far not regional mock of 2023. So a question came there which was very interesting and it required the students to determine the complex representation of a transformation where the Cartesian equations were given. The Cartesian equation was given. The, the second was to deduce that that transformation was a similitude and the next way was to determine some of its properties, meaning the scale factor or the radius and the center. So we do the first one which is determining the complex representation now we have the cartesian as x prime equal to negative x plus y root three minus root three and y prime equal to negative x root three minus y plus um two root three as we all know okay we need to multiply the second equation by i and then we add the two equations so we get z prime we get z prime equal to alpha z plus beta in that form so our x prime remains the same and then our our y prime we multiply with an i and we get um, negative xi root 3 minus i y then plus 2i root 3. We add the two equations together, okay? So we have negative x plus y root 3 minus root 3 then plus the second equation. Now I'm going to pair the terms in red first, which is negative x minus i y, okay? So I just rewrote it by combining, by bringing negative i, negative x minus i y together i'm doing that because it it is already giving me the instincts of getting z because um i know that my z is x plus i y so bringing these two terms together i can factor out the negative sign and i have z already then i try the next simplifications now the next things i'm going to pair is y root three with um negative x i root three so i pair them together and they have root three in common so i have root three into y minus i minus xi okay then now plus the remaining part which is 
2i root 3 minus this root 3. Now, I'm going to factor out a negative sign from here because I don't need a negative sign, okay? This x here is supposed to have a negative sign with respect to this. We need to have x plus i y, not something else. So, we factor out the negative sign. Factoring out the negative sign from here, we are going to be left with x i. Factoring out the negative sign from y, we are going to be left with negative i. Now, the key is identifying that negative 1 is the same as i squared okay so we are going to replace this negative here with i squared it is this is it in the blue color so x prime plus i y prime becomes negative into x plus i y minus root 3 into um x i plus i squared times y then plus this remaining part remember that this i squared is equal to negative 1 then we now factor out the negatives we now factor out an i from these two terms Factoring out i from these two terms, we factor from x, we get, we factor from x i, we get x. We factor from i squared y, one of the i's will remain. Now we see that x plus i y and x plus i y is common, which is our z. So the left hand side is z prime, then equal to negative x plus i y is z minus root 3i, then what is in red is also z, then plus 2i root 3 minus root 3 we can pair the steps together okay we allow the negative sign we are going to be left with 1 plus i root 3 then plus 2i root 3 minus root 3 so we can conclude that this is our similitude okay so this is a complex representation you see it is written in the form z prime equal to um something okay now the next solution is to deduce that it is a similitude so we just need to give a statement since our f can be written in the form z prime equal to alpha z plus beta where alpha and beta are complex numbers then it is a direct similitude as we can see our alpha is negative into 1 plus root 3i and our beta is 2i root 3 minus root 3 lastly we need to determine the scale factor and the center of the transformation so i'm going to determine the scale factor and you are going to determine the center so the scale factor is simply the modulus of the complex number negative into 1 plus root 3i which gives us 2 if you do it correctly and the center is simply the invariant point and you know at the invariant point the transmission maps the point onto itself okay so you can determine the invariant point automatically it becomes the center of the transmission thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video and remember to subscribe to the channel turn on your notifications so that when the next video will be uploaded you'll be notified to come and watch let me give you idea about the next video the next video i'm going to talk about the inverse of a similitude and I'm going to solve a polytechnic question on it.